World Stroke Day is observed on the 29th of October to underscore the serious nature and high rate of stroke, also to raise awareness of the prevention and treatment of the condition and ensure better care and support for survivors. We will be looking at the causes of stroke and if it is preventable. Uh, joining us this morning is a cardiologist, Dr. Adanijo. Thank you so much uh, for stopping by and for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm going to start by asking, um, a, a lot of people always see stroke as old people's disease or old, old people's, you know, ailment. You know, they, they don't, you know, see it in any way. Maybe it's a Nigerian thing as something that affects, affects young people. So let's start with that. Is it true that you can only have a stroke when you are, you know, maybe from 60 and above? Okay, um, thank you so much for that question. Well, that's not true. Um, even though strokes are common in older people, but we're finding these days that more and more young people are coming down with strokes. People in their 30s, people in their 40s, and even a few people in their 20s, you know, are actually coming down with strokes. You know, and this is because um, many of these people have some or all of the risk factors for stroke. So once you have a risk factor for stroke, then it's you're um, predisposed to coming down with a stroke, regardless of your age, whether you're 30, you're 40, or you're 70. Hmm. I mean, thank you for that clarity, Dr. Adanijo. I mean, the data is quite scary from what we've seen. Uh, one of what we, we realize is that it says that four out of four, one person is likely to come down with stroke and as they would say, let it not be you or let it not be anyone. How worrying is that? And that also begs the question, what's, what are the causes for stroke really? What causes this ailment or disease, if I put it that way? Okay, so stroke doesn't have one cause. Um, so first of all, what is a stroke? Because it's important we understand what a stroke is. Right. So a stroke happens when the blood supply to a part of the brain is interrupted. Okay, so when the blood, the blood supply to a part of the brain is interrupted, that part of the brain dies, you know, and it causes loss of function of the part of the brain that, um, the part of the body that the brain supplies. Now, what are the things that can cause an interruption in blood supply to the brain? Now, there's some risk factors that if these are present can cause this interruption of blood flow, okay? Now, these risk factors include hypertension, cigarette smoking, high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, okay, and some other risk factors. A family history of stroke is also a risk factor, okay? Now, if any, of, any or more of these risk factors are present, you know, people are more prone to getting a stroke. Now, it's interesting because it said that 40% of Nigerian adults are hypertensive, okay? So that's a lot of adults. So you can imagine if 40% of Nigerian adults are hypertensive, that means potentially 40% of um, Nigerian adults are at risk of getting a stroke. 25% of Nigerian adults are diabetic. So that cohort is also at risk of getting a stroke. You understand? And of the people that are hypertensive, only about 20% are aware. So most people don't know they're hypertensive and they're moving around you know, the streets. And the first um, symptom they have is a stroke. All right. So how can you prevent a stroke? Yes, go ahead. Preventing a stroke um, can be done by preventing or treating the risk factors. So treat your hypertension properly, avoid being obese, stop smoking, control your cholesterol, exercise, avoid a sedentary lifestyle, and things like that. And you reduce your chances of getting a stroke. Can a, can a stroke be uh, managed? I know a lot of Nigerians have, um, God forbid, as their health insurance policy, but mm. you know, if we're you know, being serious, um, and from the figures that you've stated, it's, it's a lot more scary than we um, are aware of. Right. Um, so can it be managed if you know, I'm at home with somebody who suffers a stroke? You know, what things can I immediately start doing that might uh, save their lives? Okay, so um, as an internal medicine physician, one of the commonest presentations in the emergency room is actually stroke. So strokes are quite common. Now, when a patient has a stroke, 
Many times, the first thing we do is that we hope it will go away. Or oh, the person tells you, I can't move my hand and my leg, or my mouth is um, deviated to one side, or I'm talking funny. And the first thing we need to do is just say, okay, let's see what will happen by tomorrow. Unfortunately, that is the wrongest thing to do. So as soon as somebody around you has a stroke, they can't move one side of their body, or you find out that their mouth is deviated to one side, or that their speech is slurred, the first thing you need to do immediately is take the patient to a hospital. Now, when the patient gets to hospital, then the doctors will manage the stroke in conjunction with appropriate specialists. So yes, yeah, strokes can be managed. We manage strokes every day. Wow. But the only issue is that once there is a paralysis or there is a damage to one part of the body, it takes time for that part of the body to regain function. Take, for example, if somebody has a stroke and can't move one arm and one leg. Now, unlike other diseases like malaria or things like that, where you recover in three days, you can't really put a timeline to the recovery of stroke. So once you do treat the immediate issues, you know, you give them immediate two weeks treatment, then the time the paralysis or the weakness recovers is actually not in anybody's hands. So it's a long road to recovery. So it may take two weeks, it may take two years, but people generally are treated for stroke every day. Some people recover fully, but some people live with the um, side effects of paralysis of the side that was affected by the stroke or their speech changes forever and they really can't talk the way they used to talk before they got the stroke. I mean, one of the things that you mentioned earlier on, uh, Dr. Adani Joy, is the fact that strokes are quite common. Uh, before we came on air, I was having a conversation with you know, a certain group and, and said, oh, today is World Stroke Day, and half of them didn't know what I was talking about. So I'm wondering, how aware are we as a people about this day or you know, all that uh, you're talking about already, and what strategies uh, do we still need to put in place to get people more sensitized about the seriousness of this matter? Okay, but there's there's some awareness because I'm sure um, everybody knows somebody that has a stroke or that has had a stroke before. So that's how common it is. Now, because in our environment, we tend to not like to talk about bad things. We don't like to talk about illnesses. We always say, God forbid, it won't happen to me. So many of us like to deny the fact that this is out there. But what do we need to do? we need to educate, 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 okay? We need to keep talking about it. We need to keep educating people. We need to spread the word that, you know, stroke is preventable, okay? Stroke is not, a, it's not something that just comes, you know, out of the blue. There's some things you need to control. And if you control those things, it's not likely you'll get a stroke, you know? So I think we just need to keep talking about it and we need to educate people and the world will eventually go around. Now, how are we celebrating World Stroke Day? Are there certain things that um, are going to be happening across Nigeria and across the world uh, today in celebration of this day and uh, to you know, raise more awareness? Well, um, Nigeria is in very interesting times. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure much celebrations are going to be done. But like I said, awareness, awareness, awareness. There's a, there's a great online campaign going on about you know World Stroke Day and and all that. This interview is, is, is one of the things that we're doing, you know, to celebrate World Stroke Day and to um, enlighten people about the dangers of getting a stroke. And um, and yeah, basically. So so that's what's going on. All right. Dr. Adanijo, thank you so very much for your thoughts there and do keep safe out there as well. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.